Hi everyone and welcome to Kids Love Art. My name is Denise and today we're gonna recreate a beautiful painting, A Tiger by Le Closier. You have received, or maybe you're gonna buy, our Kids Love Art box on kidsloveart.com where you get all the materials what you need to create today's painting. What you will find? Three brushes, a big one for the big areas, a medium one for the more medium areas for the blending and a small one for all the details. Seven colors of paint, a pre-sketch canvas and what you need extra paper towel to dry your brushes and you need a jar, a jar with water. Okay so we're gonna start with the background. The background we're gonna take a big brush because it's a big area. I will create it into black, a black color but if you think, well, well, maybe a light blue or a rainbow color or purple, that would be way nicer for my background, then go for it. It will be your own unique take. But I'm gonna stay close to the original painting, which is just black. You take it on your brush and you start here at the top. Now the reason why we work from the top all the way down is more for logistic reasons. Because otherwise, imagine I'm gonna start here and later gonna lean in towards the top. What's gonna happen? Probably my hands and this whole painting is gonna be a little bit dirty because I'm gonna start smudging it. So that's why we work from the top all the way down. So long, nice strokes, really easy. So this part is easy. I also always do the tops and the sides and the bottom as well, but you can do this at the end too. So nice, long strokes. Now, here, now we come a little bit closer to these outlines. So what do we do now? We're gonna lean in a little bit. So you hold the brush really close to the bristles, the same way as if you're gonna write your name maybe with a pencil. So hold it close to the bristles, lean a little bit forward, and then rest the palm of your hand onto the canvas, and then create a nice line. You see, with that big brush, you can create these really nice lines. All good. The reason why I lean onto the canvas, otherwise I'm gonna get really shaky lines and that's not what I want because if I'm gonna go here, my hand starts to shake a little bit. Maybe you really have really strong hands but my hands are not that strong. Like You see, then I'm gonna start shaking. So what do I do? Just a nice and relaxed approach where I have my hand leaning onto the canvas and just create a nice line. Nice and easy. If you think too difficult this big brush, you can always switch to a smaller brush as well, if you want to. But I always prefer a big brush for the background. Also, if you go slightly over these outlines, no problem. No problem here. You see, I do it constantly. I'm probably just a really messy painter, but that's absolutely fine because this is just the background. After that, we're gonna put the tiger on top. As you can see here, now I don't have space anymore to put somewhere my, my palm of my hand. So I'm just gonna lean a little bit on my table and just try it this way. Just so I get some support. Very good. Your first stage is in. You have your, your background. Everything is good because it's gonna be your masterpiece. Amazing. So I hope your background is almost dry because having it dry, it's going to help you because then again, we can put our hands uh, on the canvas again for support. So mine is dry now, which is great. Now we're going to add the colors into the tiger. So think about your favorite colors, could be anything what you'd like, or again, just follow exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to copy this guy, Le Clochet. So I'm gonna start because I am right-handed. If you're left-handed, you might want to start in the opposite corner. 
But because I'm right-handed, I'm going to start here in the left ear. And what do we see for left ear? Gray. Gray you're going to mix by adding a little bit of white here and a little bit of black. A little bit, hoor. Because black very quickly takes over the color. You see how quickly this already goes dark? Let me check. I think we can make it slightly lighter. All right. And again, you pick the colors what you think are nice for you and in your room. Because you're going to impress all your friends with your finished masterpiece. Okay. I've taken a medium brush because this ear is not that big. So let's just go for medium. It's also not that small that we need to go for a small brush. So medium will just do. I add on quite a lot of paint on my brush. It's almost like little, short little dabs of color. Now we need to be a bit careful here for the outline. But here you see already, the gray completely covers the black, so that's fine. You can think of any shape, it doesn't need to be the exact same as this. If you want to have that gray a little bit bigger, that's possible. We're just going to extend this a little bit here from the air. So this gray belongs to the air. So whatever color you've picked, if it's gray or any other color, then just remember we need to go until about here, not so much further, because this is just a part of the ear. Then this tiger has some other gray spots as well. So it is here in this part, so somewhere here. It's almost like a little triangle here. So what I'm doing now, and this is important, we're just going to focus on every single color on its own within the tiger. So we're going to do only the grays now, and after that only the blues, etc. Okay, we have a little bit of gray here in the white, but for that we actually need to put white paint first. And then you think, but why would I need to put white paint? My canvas is already white. And I agree with you, it's silly in a way, but why we do it is because it gives the same kind of texture. Because you will see your canvas has just a slight different texture than the paint when it sits on it. So I would just still say, take a little bit of white, a little bit, not much, just a thin layer. And we're just going to add it everywhere where we see a little bit of white. So again, we work from top to down, so let's keep going. So I can see it a little bit here. And again, just a thin layer, because I mean, it almost feels a little bit silly to do this, because why do we need to do it anyway? It is white. So just very quick. If you go over these outlines here, like I do as well, you can still see them, so that's fine. You do really, really good. No one's going to see this white anyway. And you see, I don't know if you can see it, but this, where that paint sticks out a little bit, this is what we call texture. And all those great big painting masters, they love texture. So whenever you see this, that little bit of paint sticking out, it's amazing. So you do really good. Almost done. Okay, if you're done as well, just let's go to the another, another color. And then we go for light blue. Okay, so for light blue, how to create that? Well, you have your blue. So we take again a little bit of blue to the middle. This is what I always do. So I scoop a bit of the blue to the middle. And then how to make it lighter? We just put a, a white in just a little bit until you're happy with the color. son his name is Oscar a light blue is his favorite color and what's your favorite color please let me know I'd love to know beautiful so this light blue sits next to that gray ear 
can try to find that like drying spot because it's gonna help you. Okay, here for the outlines we need to be a bit careful. If you feel better, you can always take a smaller brush. It is possible that your blue and your gray are gonna mix. In that case, just try to add another layer of blue just on top, just so that they are not gonna merge too much together. Now, working in blocks of color, uh, pop artists, they use that a lot. So they use like only, they don't mix too many, many colors, they don't blend too many colors, but they just add a block of color on top of the compass. So the color kind of pops off the compass. Here you can see I go over these lines, these tiger stripes. If you feel better, you can go around it, but you see, I think, I think you can absolutely put these lines back on later. Okay, wow. My first light blue part is there. Okay, let's search. Where else do we see light blue? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, where do we see light blue? In the eyes. I'm first gonna go for the bigger parts. So I see it a bit here, so next to the nose. This painting is almost like a little puzzle, trying to find where all the colored areas are. Again, the light blue, and this is happening for me, that that mixes into the white a little bit. Again, just either paint extra thick, or again, maybe we just need to wait until it's a bit more dry. But I'm gonna go for extra thick paint. Because then, do you remember what we then create? A little bit of texture. And that's really beautiful. It's better to go to a small brush. So I take my really tiny brush and then add the light blue into the eyes. Only here. So either try to put your arm again or your, your palm of your hand again on the compass or if it's not dry, your pinky. For me it's dry and it will give me just that support what I need. Wow. So nice, right? So the blue is in there. Now we're gonna focus on the orange. How do you create orange? Very easy. So we take a little bit of yellow, again in the middle. So we take two primary colors, so yellow and red. We mix that together. Perfect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to it. The reason is that, well, I have of course my light blue and this also just looks a little bit more like a light orange and it's gonna help you making the paint look a little bit thicker on your canvas. Hmm, what do you think? Looks good, right? I hope you're happy with yours. So again, still with a medium brush, we're gonna start again at the top. So, here you go. So we just follow the ear here. Way 
down to here. Where else is orange? Well, there is here a lot of orange here. Just below his eye. It is a kind of... Here, let's see. So it goes below his eye, next to his nose. matter if the shapes are not 100% the same, like that doesn't matter at all. So, approximately. And then it goes all the way over the nose, just like that. And then from here, we're going to connect it down in a kind of triangle. You see? And now once we have the shape, it's easy, we're just going to... Again, some sort of a triangle shape here. Now we have a last one, which is here, just next to the light blue. Make sure that the light blue is dry though, because if it's not dry, the light blue and the orange mixing together is probably gonna give you some sort of a, yeah, a brownish color. So we don't really want that. So if it's not dry yet, you can wait and do it later, but if it is dry, here, you can just do the same as what I'm doing. Great! So orange is there. Okay, rinse your brush again. Now we are gonna go to the green color. Now, if you want to mix green yourself, do you know how to do this? Which primary colors do we need to mix green? It is yellow and blue. If you mix them together, you're gonna get green. But if you have our Kids Love Art box, you have received also green in it. So why make it ourselves difficult and just take, take the green as it is. So I'm gonna take the green, what I have from the box, Add again a little bit of white and add this on our cool tiger's face. Again, if you cover those lines, it's okay. We can find them back. Really, we can. I'll take you through it. So we're gonna take, we add the green here next to the light blue. Again, be careful that the light blue is not gonna come too much into the green. So add the light blue, add uh, the green next to the light blue. All the way until this sketched line. And there we stop. Here we stop. And then until this sketch line again. So the green goes from the blue all the way until the next sketch line you see here. Good, good. Then there is a little bit of green in the ear. I just need to switch quickly to a small brush. puzzle piece again. Let's just call it a puzzle piece. So, just here. Very good. And again, if it's not the exact same, no one is going to notice. It doesn't matter. It's your take. Your take on this piece. And then where else do we see green? Here little circle connecting these two lines so we just put a circle like almost like an oval actually oval here anywhere else oh that's 
that's it. Very good, very good. So now we are gonna create the red. All we need to do is just simply add the red on your brush. There's nothing more to it. And we add the, uh, add the red here into this tiger. It's a quite big area and it goes all the way here until the blue. All the way. Okay, so I have decided to put my red area here. It's not the exact same as this, but that doesn't matter. It's my take on it. And again, your take will be probably different as well. So, but this is my red area. Great. Hmm, where else? Ah, of course, the tongue. Again, I still have my uh, medium brush, but if you want to switch to Small, you can always do that, of course. Huh? There is a little bit of red here. A little bit. Just put a little line. There is a bit of red here. Almost again like a, an oval. Let's just do it. And there is a little red line somewhere here. Here. Yeah. Good. Okay, red is done as well. Well done. Now we're gonna create the beige part of the tiger. How to create beige? It's actually so easy. You take a little bit of brown, again, put it into the middle, and then you take a lot of white. A lot. A nice beigey color. What we can do is add a little bit of yellow to it, a little bit, to kind of make it a gold feeling. My son loves any kind of gold color. So we're just gonna try to mimic our own kind of gold color. Looks good, right? So again, we start here at the top. Let's add this beautiful color. So I have once been on a safari and it was so cool. I saw tigers and lions. I was, I was in South Africa, uh, the place where the tigers and lions live. And uh, I was in an open car. It was a little bit scary in a way, but I was in an open car, of course, with like people around it. So you were protected. And, uh, and the lions and the tigers came really close to our car. And it was so beautiful to see, like these creatures are amazing. And actually what we did as well, and it was on another day, but we did a walking safari. And a walking safari just means that you're gonna walk through the place where all these wild animals live. And well, we had a ranger with us who could tell us like amazing stories about uh, about all all uh, the wild animals well maybe luckily or maybe not luckily but we didn't see a tiger in real life there maybe for the better because i wouldn't have known what to do otherwise i mean what would you do your favorite animal? Also maybe a tiger? I have brought down the color all the way from the top, all the way down. Just fill every single white spot. Now here, I need to be a bit careful. Oops. Be careful you two. So that we don't smudge too much in the green. Then we have a big part of beige here just on the nose. Let's see. So this is all beige. It's actually quite easy. All beige. And here. 
here comes from the eye. There. Big blob again. Let me see. So. might in these areas you might want to switch to a smaller brush I will do that at the end but for now I just keep this one in my hand and then fill at the end all these little tiny areas so this white here on the painting as well Let's see this part will become yellow later on let me just double check yeah good now here under this tongue way up till the sketch line very good random shape doesn't really matter it's just here all the way around the tongue yeah this works do you see this texture by the way do you see that do you see that that paint sticks out I love that really love that did you manage to get some of this as well it's very nice Oops. <laughs> okay, where else? Mm, here. A bit of beige here. A bit of our gold beige. Ah, and then here. Along the nose. Oh, I see I forgot this. Cut this bit. So all the way here in the nose, in the nose here, and down. Wow, this is a big chunk. Do I do this correct? Yes. Until about here. And then it's white again. Careful for the red. At least my red is still wet, so I speak to myself. Be careful for the red. Oh, and a beautiful little circle here. I like those circles. They make this tiger even happier. It's a very happy little tiger. Um, yeah, good. Good, well done. Now we're gonna do the last color of this tiger and it's yellow. Again, yellow, we can just take it as it is. Oops, just a bit of yellow. I am gonna put a tiny bit of white again on it. And this is just to make sure that the yellow is strong enough onto the compass. Are you ready? Where do we see yellow? I see it here at the top. Just a tiny stripe. I see it here next to the red. I need to be careful that I'm not going to smudge the red too much into the yellow. If you feel your colors are going to smudge too much, just wait. You don't need to do this all in one go. You can wait, relax, and then come back to the painting again. Or if you are as excited as me, you just keep going. Okay. throughout I just keep my medium brush I'm just gonna fill this and again oh the texture so nice uh, yeah here below the gray in this little corner what's left Again, you can very clearly see this is my take on the piece. I like, I haven't 100% copied all the shapes, but it's okay. It's really okay. Here, the nose. It's almost like a heart shape. Or maybe I just see hearts. Next to our beige gold, we have a little bit. Oh, by the way, Oscar loves glitter. If you want, you can always add a little bit of glitter as well to it if you want. If you have some at home, it could be nice. Or 
mean the tiger itself? We bring this color all the way down. Yeah, actually it goes all the way down. And it goes down here. Well, I'm just going to put it on this side. I'm going to just take a small brush, rinse it, dry it, and then small brush. And just add here a little blob, here a little line. Where else? Where do we feel like? Here in the air, if you want. Good! It looks amazing! So now all our colors are in there. And now what we need to do is wait. I am gonna wait a little bit because, as you can see, I have the texture. You remember that word? That thickness of the paint. So I have the texture, and that means my paint is still wet. And it's not a good idea to paint the black lines on top of wet paint. Do you know why? Because if I'm gonna paint black straight onto the wet paint, my black becomes like a gray or a, like a, a way lighter color of black. So it, it, it's not gonna be as impactful as like cool, those cool tiger stripes if we're gonna wait. So now take a minute, wait, put it outside. If, if you live in a nice hot country, I mean, we are here in Dubai, I'm gonna put it outside. So it dries very quickly, and then we come back. See you in a minute. Okay, so we are now at the final stage of this amazing painting. We're gonna do all the black parts. For the black, we do need a little bit of focus and patience, but let's, let's get right to it. I'm gonna take a small brush, and I'm gonna add it into the paint, into the black, and again, as usual, you know this by now, we're going to start at the top and work our way down. If your canvas is dry, mine is, I actually put it outside. If yours is dry, you can add all the black parts. What we are going to do, very similar to the same thing what I said earlier in the very first stage, is that you need to hold your brush, but this time a small brush, very close to the bristles. So pretend it's your pencil or any kind of coloring pencil and we hold it close to the bristles. Then again, rest your hand on the compass if this is possible, if your compass is dry. If not, kind of do it like floating in the air and I'm sure you can manage. But if it is dry, try to put it here. And this is what we're gonna do. Now we're gonna fill in all the blanks. Very good job. So we just need some focus then we're going to make a beautiful end painting. I usually love this part because it kind of brings everything together. I'm sure you're going to be so proud by the end of this. Now, if, if your brush is a little bit dry on the outside, how do we know if it's dry now? For example, let me see, ah, here, I don't know if you can see it. If your brush is a little bit dry here on the outside, so you see that bit of pixelation, what you can do is you can take a tiny bit of water. So you dilute that black a little bit with water, not much, just a tiny bit. And then off you go. And then easy on the inside. Good. I don't know if you just saw what I did there, but I put my palm of my hand on the compass and now I have a bit of green into the nose. It's gonna happen. But if this happens for you as well, what you can do later is just put a little bit of that gold beige color on top of it. I'm just gonna let it, let it be for now. Ears are done, now we're gonna improvise on the tiger stripes. 
Mine are covered by paint, so I really need to improvise. If yours are not covered yet and you can see your lines, easy peasy, just go over it with the black. If you need to improvise just like me, imagine how a tiger would look like or where you want to add those stripes. Again, it's nature, so it doesn't really matter. Every tiger has its own stripes in its own pattern, so you can create yours. I create mine. So again, I dilute a little bit. It just makes, makes it easier for me. I'm gonna start at the top. Okay, so it comes from the middle. Now, this is also important. Try not to put a lot of pressure on the brush. The more pressure, look, the thicker the line. The th less pressure, the thinner the line. So play around with that. Maybe you want to even test this on a separate piece of paper, just so you get that feeling of pressure and the differences in your pressure. up a lot. So we can just make here a little triangle again. Again, this does not need to be even. We are dealing with nature, so nothing in nature is 100% symmetrical. I hope I got that statement right, by the way. I actually don't know. <laughs> Zigzags going through the blue part, connecting to the green. And I'm gonna mirror that a little bit on the other side. Zigzag randomly. Like a T. 
tear, it's not a tear, but there's a line going down in the orange. So that's a line and it goes up again towards the green. And then we have the top part of the eye. Now we need to be careful again, not too thick. So minimum pressure. You remember, right? A lot of pressure is a thick line. Minimum pressure is a thin line. Good. Did you get that? Minimum pressure. Oh, good. Now we're going to do the inside of the eye. I'm going to do this line. So from here, it's like a long, yeah, it's like almost like an L, the letter L. So it's long, going down, and then we go this way. Your letter L. So here we have the L, and now we do a little top part of the L. Yeah, what would that be? some dripping on it yeah good the L is done what else let's move to the other side of the eye so we can just work this way okay what do we see here mm, I'm just gonna first do the exciting part first let's see eye I love doing the eyes then your piece really feels finished almost finished okay so we go around it around again later we have that well tear whoops there we go already around the blue wow Here, this is just like a long line, any direction, doesn't really matter. Here again, a little line here. Then we have some lines here. There's a long line now connecting to the eye. Wow, yeah, good with a little Let's see here where's it going so a little triangle again wow and we can make that a bit thicker Also the outlines what you have in your canvas I can still see them I don't know if you can do you hear that sound sometimes we have a dog a really cute little dog his name is bear <laughs> he is like a small he's like this big this big I guess <laughs> he's a small little but really cute cute dog it is a boston terrier like very similar to a frenchie but every now and then you hear like tick 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 and that's him like basically walking by so if you hear that you know bear is nearby us bear and the tiger what a good combination okay like a stripe here shall we do one more sometimes it's easy just to think of every shape to something, bring it down to something what you recognize, like a triangle or a circle or an oval or a square. Makes things a bit easier. But this is just a swirling line. Maybe there's one big line here, eh? Yeah. From under the ear. Starts from under the ear. 
And we sketched it out as well on your canvas all the way down. Okay, there we go. Ooh. It doesn't need to be straight. Actually, it's better if it's not straight. Because straight, straight is just a bit boring. And it doesn't happen in tigers. They have zigzags. They have nothing is straight there. So if your line doesn't come out straight, perfect. It's even better. Okay, let's fill it. Good. Let's finish it up here on this side. So we have one more sketch line. I can still see it in my canvas. Can you see it in yours? I can see one here. So we go. Whoa, all the way down. Whoa, all the way. Whoa, even more. It is like almost next to these and then we just put like a line a line nice thick and we bring it all the way down so it's a long line so far is this okay for you guys then we have one more big line here and it's in here on this side so from his ear from his ear down yeah from here approximately all the way down again long line doesn't need to be straight it's actually even better if it's not it's a tiger into a little whoop. and then you can fill it again on the other side it doesn't need to be perfect just like this so these were two easy kind of straight lines going down what else ah we have the nose so the nose we have in this kind of gold brown beige color we have two lines of the nose these are these parts so let's add them so that's one is here so that's just just there on the side in the beige part and now we need to find somewhere else on the other side so that will be in the same position and we put it there so this just gives the nose the width of the nose from the tiger. Okay, now we're gonna go to this part. So around the yellow, we take the black again. We go around the yellow, nice and easy. We follow the shape, beautiful shape you've already created. Mm. Ok, 
Okay. What else do we have? Yeah, this is almost like, like this. See this? It will indicate his fur. So it's like a very fluffy, cute tiger. So all you do is you bring your brush up and down, up and down. at the bottom. Some little stripes still. Is there anything else what we can do? Oh, we have some tiger stripes here. I forgot. Okay, so the last part is now to just give that little sparkle in the eyes of the tiger. What we do, simple, add some white to your brush. And once the eye is uh, dry, we just add here in the top corners. And wow. Isn't this just the most ferocious tiger? Voila, you're done with your masterpiece. I hope you loved it. I hope you love this tiger as much as I do and that you're gonna put this painting on your wall. This is my painting and I am super proud of it and I'm sure you're gonna be super proud of yours as well. If you like this, give us a little thumbs up and please subscribe below. See you later guys, bye.